Hello and welcome to this little video series about GNUplot, a free data visualization and plotting program that I'm very fond of. It can do a lot of powerful things and if you know how, it can make your data look real pretty. So let's get right to it. What I have here is the Windows version of GNUplot. There's a Linux version that runs in the terminal. This Windows version has some minimal graphic interface on the top right here but it's still all command line based and we'll see what that means in a second. Suppose you have an experiment with some measurement or a simulation that spits out some data and the data will roughly look somewhat like this. So each line corresponds to a data point and the first column corresponds to an X coordinate and the second column corresponds to a Y coordinate. Now to get a rough idea of how this data looks like we simply go to Knublot and we type plot followed by quotation marks and the file path and file name of our file. Now it's a little quicker to not type out the whole file path but go to file change directory and now simply select the folder where your file is located. This can actually save a lot of time and it changes your working directory to that folder. Now you see, although I selected this item from the drop down menu, all it actually did was type in the command cd, change directory, followed by the path in this command line and it pressed enter for me. So although you may choose buttons in this drop down menu, all it ever does is enter the appropriate command and press enter for you. Now we can simply type plot, quotation mark, and the name of our data file, which in my case is data.dat and hit enter. And what you see is some rough visualization of your data. Now the top right part here is the legend, also called key in Knublot, uh, and it usually contains the file name, which is not very pretty. So we can just go unset key and the key is gone. It doesn't replot the data though. Um, it usually doesn't replot after every single command. So to replot, you could either type the same command, once more plot, quotation marks, and your file name. But that's very slow. You could also use your arrow keys to navigate through previous commands until you arrive at the plot command and hit enter. Or you can use the command replot. Just plot the last plot command once more. As you can see, uh, the key, the legend, is now gone. It's usually a good idea to label your data though. So we go set key and in our plot command, we now add title, quotation marks, my very interesting data. Hit enter. And as you can see, our data is now labeled. Now you might not like these purple plus symbols for the data points. So we might work on that. So with our plot command, we simply add line type, let's say seven, line color zero, hit enter. And as you can see, I replaced the plus symbols by black filled circles. You might like that more. So what I did is I changed the type of the points or it's called line type or point type, both works, doesn't matter, to type number seven and I change the color to color number zero. There's no need to remember all the colors and uh, point types. What you can do is you can type test to bring up this window. Um, this is very helpful for a lot of reasons. But let's focus on this right part right here. You can see these numbers and which color and which symbol they correspond to. So I chose symbol number seven, which is this filled circle. And I choose color number zero, which is black. Now what you might want to do, it doesn't always make sense, but sometimes you might want to connect your data points with straight lines. So you have your plot command and you just add with lines points. And it connects your data points with straight lines. This is maybe a good time to say that Knuplot doesn't want you to type too much and all commands can be shortened. So instead of this whole line type seven, line color zero with lines points thing, we can just type LT seven, LC zero, 
wlp. And it has the same result. And also every single command can be shortened until it's uniquely distinguishable from all other commands. We can, for instance, go unset k. And since unset key is the only command that starts with unset k, it just unsets the key. As you see, simple as that. And then we set k again, replot. And we have the legend back up here. You might actually want to get rid of these points altogether and only have your data points connected by lines. So you can go instead of with lines points with lines. And you just have your data connected with lines. Very nice. I go back to points for now. So WP is points, which is also the default option. So if you don't write anything, you get it with points. Now, as you might have noticed, our data looks a lot like a sine wave. We can just replot this real quick. And you see, this appears to be a sine wave, maybe with some error. Uh, what we can do is we can plot an actual sine wave and compare these two. So if you have a plot command, you can always hit a comma and then enter a new data set. So everything after this word plot, you can write out after the comma. So you could choose a new data file, another title, another color, another symbol. So you can type numerous data sets in the same diagram. But what you can also do is you can plot analytic functions. So I can go sine of x, hit enter, and I get the sine wave with my data. And of course, we can also go line color seven, for instance, this should be red. And we can go title, and you can go like model. So this is like a model from some theory that predicts this to be a sine wave. And as you can see, that makes kind of sense. As you can see, the X range and the Y range of our diagram is chosen automatically by GNU plot. And sometimes you might not like that. For instance, let's say we want our X values to go from minus one to 13. So what we can do is we can go set X range square brackets, minus one, colon, 13, square bracket, hit enter, replot, and you see we changed the X range. And the same works for Y, of course. What's also important is to label your axes. So we can go set X label, quotation marks, and say our X coordinate represents a time in seconds. And our Y coordinate say represents some water level in meters. And replot, and you see the labels were added. This looks quite pretty, so you might want to save it in an image file. So there are a few options here. One is just to hit this button, export plot to file, and you can save it as an image file. A little more control you get if you go set terminal PNG, and then you have a few customization options. For instance, you can go size, uh, maybe 800 by 600. So it will output your diagram in an image file with this size. And there are a lot of other options, so you can read that up and customize your images. Now you need to set an output. So you go set output, quotation marks, um, data image dot PNG. Uh, what this does is in your working directory, it creates an empty image file with that name. And as soon as you go replot or your plot command, it fills that image file with your image. So this is now saved. And to go back to our previous output, we can just go set terminal or term, which is just short for terminal, uh, WXT. And if you now go replot, you see this is this default window again that we got in the beginning. There's one last thing I want to show here, and that's error bars. So in my data file, I have my X coordinate in the first column, my Y coordinate in the second column, and my error in the third column. As you can see, these numbers are quite large, and this is because I measured my water level in meters and my error in millimeters. That's not an issue though. So we'll go to new plot again. We go up to our previous plot command. 
and with the first data dot that plot we go with error bars and of course I need to select the data file that contains the additional errors so data errors as you can see this doesn't make a lot of sense and as I said the errors are scaled by a factor 1000 since they're in millimeters but Knublot can deal with this don't worry we just need to do a little customization so right after the file name we write a command it's called using and this allows you to specify which columns to use for which data entry so the default is just one two three so this is the first column contains x values the second column contains y values the third column contains errors you could for instance use this to change x and y values around by writing two column one column three um, what we're going to use this though is perform arithmetic operations on our data so instead of three i just write round brackets here then i write dollar three which tells knublot use the value contained in the third column but now i can do operations i can say divide this by 1000 hit enter and boom you got your error bars there to scale you can see this makes sense uh, the error value i chose was two times the standard deviation so most points are not more than two standard deviations away from the curve some are but that's just how gauss error works so that makes perfect sense so that's all for today be sure to subscribe and join me next time when we talk about more advanced plotting techniques and see you then thanks for watching